Hello, welcome to Scratch Theory Printing. In this video, I'll be trying to figure out what is wrong with the K2 Plus. Could it be another plug? Something wrong with the CFS? Or something is jammed into the K2 Plus? Let's scratch today's troubleshoot. Okay, before we get to this troubleshoot video, I just want to say that I really don't know what is going on with the K2 Plus. Okay, so as I was printing this box right here, I loaded in three filaments of black PLA. I configured them to the same filament on the screen here, and I thought that the quality K2 Plus was gonna do after it finished this row, it's gonna go to this row or this row. Either way, it doesn't really matter, but it doesn't even do that. I'm not quite sure where the filament sensor is. It could be here or the filament sensor could be in here. I'm not quite sure yet, or it could be up here because when you load in the filament, it detects it and it automatically loads in. Not quite sure where the filament detector is or the filament detector that stops the print so once that happened the printing temperature dropped down to 160 and it gives me an error saying that my nozzle is not heating up to temperature which is 220 where I set it and it's not reaching that point so it stops the print it just shut the machine off for safety purpose but before I do that the print head went all the way back here and then it stops the print then I click resume and then it resume the nozzle went up back to 220 it started printing but this filament is already finished and it didn't even detect that it just keep printing it was printing into this high and I realized that well it's not even printing so there are like a couple of things that I think might happen one is that it ran out it did not detect it or something Number two is that it's clogged. And number three is that the back there is clogged back there or stuck something. It was stuck somewhere. But if I do this, I go to setting right here, I retract. So I'm gonna retract out the filament. It goes back there now. Okay, I didn't really catch that, but it just did that. And look at this, it gives me this error right here. Cutter issue, the cutter may be jammed or missing. Click retry. If we click retry, it will just do that and gives you the error. We try. Just keep doing that. It doesn't even work anymore. I don't know why. What happened? And yeah, that's what happened with this K2 Plus. So not quite sure, but we're gonna diagnose this and see what is the issue. I did not try this yet, but let me pick the second filament and extrude and see what happened. Okay, same thing, same thing happened. Yeah, it keeps giving me this error, so I don't know what is going on. Disassemble this and try to just manually pull off the filament. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna try to pull out the filament from back here. So I'm just gonna take this off and can I pull this? Okay, I can pull this a little bit. Oh, what? It went to this? So it's not the other one now, it's the middle one now. Oh, it's a second spool now, okay. I didn't realize that. So it did change. Okay, now that I just pulled the back filament here, it's this one now. So it did, so this spool is finished and it did change to this spool. But I think something just got jammed with the nozzle. It could be jammed here or the cutter right here. It couldn't cut or something like that, whoa. Wait, what if I just smash it right? Isn't that cutting it? This would be a perfect time for me to disassemble this. So how you disassemble this is, I'm gonna shut out the fan. Oh, it's still 220. Oh, okay. So this head is hold on by magnetic. And the two clip up here, there's no clip, but there's like two circle here that it locks in. What you do is you just push this chain back a little bit, pull this forward, lift it up, and it comes off like this. I'm gonna manually extrude this and see if it works. So I will manually extrude this. Let's see if it's gonna work. Not quite sure how much the extrusion is. Maybe it is this up here. So let's do 10 millimeter extrude. So if nothing's happening, then I think there might be a jam in here somewhere. Uh, I wish I can lower this, but we can't. So. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna remove this top right here. It tells you exactly how to remove the, the extruder right here. Here it has a screw here and a screw up here. So if you look at here, it will tell you exactly where it is. Okay, let's get this out. 
and see. But it says that caution, the spring may pop out. So be very careful and don't lose the spring. And one up here. And one screw back here, right there. That's the last screw. So let's remove this screw. It's in here. This one is a very small screw. Okay, very careful. Is there a spring anywhere? Oh my gosh, look at that. That looks so cool. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh, it's so hard. It's so cramped. Uh, it's this base right here. Uh, look at the extruder here. It looks so cool. So the spring they're talking about is this spring right here. Make sure that this thing does not pop out. And if we look here, we can see that the filament is stuck somewhere else. Right? The filament comes from here and this blue marker here. And it goes down here to the filament extruder gear. And it goes down here to the heat sink. And you can see right here. You can see that? This piece, right? And if you look closely right here, you can see that there's a piece of filament right here. Right there. It goes into this tube and then to the heat sink and then to the nozzle. But if we look closely at this, you can definitely see that the filament broke right here. And it's like stuck to the side of this tube. And the blade is right here. That's the blade where it goes to the side over here. It goes to the side over here and it pushes this blade right here. So if there was a filament in there, it pushes the blade, cut it, cut the filament straight through. That looks really cool. Even though it's really similar design to the rest of the extruder gears, it still looks awesome. The filament is right here, so let's try and see if I can, you know, get this out. This is one of the best tools you can get inside of here. Ah, look at that. The filament broke. That is very old filament, so it's very brittle. It breaks very easily. Do any filament in here? There's no filament in there. So I'm gonna pull this out, push on the black ring here, and you just pull out the tube. Like that. And oh my gosh, it looks so nasty. Look at that. It's been crunching. The gear has been crunching on this thing, and it just looks so bad. So can I pull this? Okay, it's stuck from back there and even if I pull this the CFS is not engaged So it's not letting any more filament on the CFS down here, which is fine But uh, this is so nasty. I'm gonna cut this at an angle But if we look at this, it's a really nice and cool simple design So that's where the motor is attached from and the motor spin this spins and it goes in here spins the gear in here so I'll show you how this works. The filament goes in, like that. You can see that the latch right there, right? It goes up right there. So it goes in there, the latch pulls out, and then it goes to the extruder gear down there. You can push this thing away. Oh, oh, careful, careful. This is actually really interesting because there is no screw here. Is there supposed to be a screw right here? From what I know, you can screw in this to get more tension on here. So I don't know if that is meant to be or it's just me forgot to put this in or it comes in like this. If we look at the motor gear right here, we look closer. Spur gear. Wow, I did not notice that. Dude, that is so cool. A spur gear for the motor. Okay, so now that we got that filament out, I'm gonna try and put this back in. So maybe right here, yeah, yes, yes, right here. Yes, look at that. That is the filament sensor right there, if you can see. I think it might be like a laser-ish detection right here. So if there's anything come through here, it detects it and it lights up saying that there's filament. And once it goes through the filament detection, there's no more filament. That's really Cool. So I'm gonna put in the tube back in there and I'll click extrude and see if it works. Okay. <gasps> yes, look at that. A big, big blob just went down. Oh, yes, it's working. Now I can continue my project. Click extrude again. One more time. Yes, oh, a huge poop just came out. Oh my gosh. Let's extrude all of that out. Paper 
Tau and this clean up the nozzle. This is, I don't know, it's stuck in there. Oh, so nasty. This nozzle is very, very dirty. <laughs> Take a look at the poop right here. <laughs> that was the first clog. And that was the second huge clog. Oh my gosh, look at that. The poop, look at the poop. Now that is actually poop. I bet the nozzle feels so good after these two came out. Okay, well, there you go. A clog K2 Plus. It wasn't really a clog, but I think the filament just broke when it was printing. The filament just, you know, snapped, broke because it's very old filament. Very old filament can break easily. And if the PLA just sit there for a long time, it's very brittle, so it just broke. It wasn't really a clog, it was just the filament broke. And yeah, not quite sure why. The filament broke. The nozzle did not heat up to temperature, but it doesn't even try cutting it, but whatever. And it gives you the cut error. But it wasn't really that, it was just the filament not there, and the filament retracted past the filament sensor. So there was no filament in there, and it couldn't detect any of that. Which, to my surprise, after I went through all of that, kinda sucked, to be honest. <laughs> so first, it did not detect that the filament was not in there, it couldn't even retract, because it can't cut the filament so it does not know where the filament was yeah that's pretty much it not quite sure why they didn't thought of that or something like that even though the filament sensor on the top of the nozzle printhead even though that doesn't sense any filament it should still be able to retract because the CFS has its own motor retractable up there and the printhead has its own motor so it should be able to retract but when you click retract it says that Something wrong with the cutter, the filament is not there. I'll put the error code right here, I forgot what it says, but I'll put the error code right here, something about cutting the filament. But if you ran into this problem, now you know how to fix it, how to disassemble and take off the extruder to check whether your filament is stuck in there or not. To my surprise, taking off the printhead right here is very easy. I'm gonna say it's 10 times easier than playing with the K1 Max. The K1 Max sucks. You gotta take off three screw, which is in the awkward spot. But that will be it for this video of me unclogging or fixing this problem with the K2 Plus. Let me know in the comments down below have you ran into this problem? And let me know in the comments down below way after did you ran into this problem and did you fix it? Leave a like on this video, share this video because if people ran into this problem, they won't know where to go. And this video will definitely help them a lot. Subscribe to the channel because more amazing stuff like this is coming and something different. Amazing is coming. Don't want to miss that. Subscribe to this channel. But that'll be it for this video. And as always, keep on doing your printing. But before you leave, if you are in need of lithium ion batteries, check out my store right here. It's scratch3dbattery.store. You can choose from various types of connectors T plug with a balanced charger, or just a simple JST SM plug, or if you need XT60 or XT30, it's also available with a balanced charger. You can choose from various type of battery pack and connectors that suits your needs. So once again, if you need high quality lithium ion battery pack, check out my store, scratch3dbattery.store. There will be a link in the description down below. And thank you so much.